I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Sent a couple of guys after him, and these were both good agents. They were both men. She's irresistible. Has there ever been anyone you couldn't seduce? No. The only thing more dangerous than their plan, you change partners, you change rules, is being partners. You're playing both sides. Sean Connery, Catherine Zeta Jones, Bing Reigns. Entrapment rated PG 13. Hey, this is Matt once again. This is another. PayPal request, this time from Jameson. Thank you so much for that. If people want to request pretty much any type of reviews or re-reviews, topics, reactions, whatever type of video, you just send the request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Entrapment with Sean Connery, which was nice to, to see again. I actually got quite... I did a couple requests for Sean Connery films, The Rock, Entrapment, and Lead of Extraordinary Gentleman, which will be sometime this month least so far unless I get more which I'm open to <laughs> but it was nice because I'm you know Sean Connery he passed away recently uh, we watched The Rock reviewed that that's a very fun film uh, this one I always thought was okay I don't hate the film it was cool again to see Sean Connery uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones I thought the two of them worked well together it's a you know a heist movie the trailers kind of make it more of an action path film than it is. But it was cool to see the two of them work together. Sean Tyler did a good job. Uh, you have people like Will Patton, Veen Rames, and others in the supporting cast. Um, like I said, it's one of those films that I know uh, Sean Connery, I said this in my review of The Rock, for films he was proud of in the 90s. I remember hearing it was The Rock in this movie that he was the most proud of, in the 90s, that is, of his work. And maybe because, hey, I got to be with Catherine Zeta-Jones, which I don't blame him. Uh, the gist of the story is Catherine Zeta-Jones is supposed to be following this uh, aged thief. And then pretty much goes up to him and says hey I need your help I need to steal this thing oh, I'm not sure I trust you rule number two never trust a naked woman rule number one no guns so she says she's a thief he's like okay prove it to me we'll go over here you get this vase the guy fucks with her so one thing leads to another hits the guy with it gets what's inside a little bit of car chase as they're attacked by a guy with a knife. Then one thing leads to another. Sean Connery takes her to his castle. First we try. Then we trust. Uh, Veen Rames is a guy who gets Sean Connery equipment he needs for this heist. And the heist that they're dear enough for at first is to steal this mask. They do that. And that's supposed to lead up to this next heist. Which is for $8 billion 
and what's called the International Clearance Bank. And the movie, a chunk of it is training for this stuff and then accomplishing the goal while Catherine Zeta Jones and Sean Connery fall in love with each other. Now, the preparation is fun to watch, to see Catherine Zeta Jones and her flexibility with her sexy body and nice flexible legs that you want wrapped around your neck. <laughs> Let me get some room for you. I mean, for me, it was the movie was never anything to run too much home about because I like the two leads and the heists are interesting, but that's really what all the film is. But just part is like, well, what more do you want it to be? Like even other heist films, they seem there's a bit more to them other than that. They like even like uh, the Italian Job. Yeah, it's a Mark Wahlberg film, but I do like it. Like that seemed like it had a bit more to it compared to this, compared to Heights films. But on the flip side again, the almost seductive way she's moving through this rope, which is supposed to represent the lasers that she's got to remember and showcase that she can do this. How efficient they are in stealing the mask with all the stuff they train with, like blast the bits in terms of the mo bell rings of the clock how she maneuvers to get this mask. Sean Carter's like, hey, I know there's something up with you. What's the real plan? What's really going on? Well, it's a setup to get equipment and money to do this bigger plan, the bigger heist, a little romance between the two characters. And then showing the second heist where they get in this elevator and they got to manipulate the camera. So it's one of those movies where the people think they're watching an elevator and there's no one there but there actually is someone there and they're both of them have to maneuver through these light pulses in the hallway together and this is around the time of Y2K in the year 2000 so people were worried that it was going to fuck up everything so they had to this company apparently had to shut everything down and that's when she like put a couple cords in and somehow that gets them 8 billion dollars <laughs> but then she fucks up they barely escaped this big metallic room and then pretty much they got across this bridge with these lights. It's things fuck up some more. They swing. They give one to the other. Sean Connery gives her this parachute to slide down this vent. You find out, spoiler alert, starting now, spoilers, that really this was an entrapment for her. Because yeah, she was working with this insurance company, but that was undercover. she was really a thief and Sean Connery had been arrested by Vinnie Rains who was an FBI agent and say, like, hey we think she's into this help us trap her that's why the Tao entrapment but Sean Connery fell in love with her so he's like hey pretend that you put a gun to me uh, you escape I, I did my best they leave Catherine Zeta Jones comes back they kiss they love each other they leave end of movie why did I sum it up that way because as I watched the film I'm like okay I don't think it's the most exciting film is that the most fun film I don't know if it needed I don't know really what it needed I, I didn't I don't mind the film because I like the two leads and some of the the heist things are are decent entertainment but like I said this is never one of those Sean Connery films that I loved and would watch over and over again. It's a bit sad looking back that like Outland, which I think has a lot more for Sean Connery to do, I think is a lot better film. That didn't do anything, but this was a pretty decent sized hit. And I'm like, well, you know, why is it Outland got nothing? But this got a bit more bang for his butt. I just I still don't understand to this day, but te technically that's not the movie's fault, what happened to Outland. What is the movie's fault is, I just, are these as exciting as it could be and as, 
I try to feel like what more could use. Because, uh, like I said, Catherine Zeta Jones is sexy and she's got a fire to her that's nice to witness. Sean Connery is Sean Connery and that's not a bad thing at all. But. Other than them, there's not really a whole lot to spice up the movie, whether it be the other supporting characters, like Veen Rames. I like Veen Rames, but this is not really one of the movies I look towards to showcase. Oh, this is why I like Veen Rames. I go more towards Dark Dead remake, Pulp Fiction, even the Mission Impossible. In a way, he's kind of playing a less interesting version of his character in Mission Impossible. That's how I view this character. Imagine that terrible Mission Impossible would be even but a lot less interesting. That's kind of what this guy is. Will Patton, pretty much, you know, you, you could tell he's got some kind of fucking crush hard on for Catherine Zeta Jones. That's pretty much it. The high scenes are fine, but again, the first high scene is pretty much her flexibility thing. Yeah, remember years before you had Mission Impossible, and I thought those heist scene, those scenes involving a heist, were much more suspenseful or intriguing. And as Mission Impossible, it had a lot more other stuff going on, like the whole finale on the train and the helicopter almost getting close to Tom Cruise. Like it had more stuff going for it other than just that. Like Tom Cruise was good, some of the actors group, but it seemed like it had more to it. And more to like Brian De Palma's direction. Here, maybe that's my problem is that the, the direction is kind of flat. The direction is kind of nothing that really impressed me. I mean, I don't even remember who the hell directed this. I could look it up, but well, I'll do it anyway. So bear with me. <laughs> But maybe that's what it's like. It, the direction isn't really that noteworthy. I mean, I can't tell you a damn thing about the direction of the film. Because it, nothing really comes to mind. And when the action does happen, it's... You know, they swing. Because it's like a bridge. It's like two towers of this building. Little bridge in between. They swing from one to the other. But it's, I mean... After seeing stuff like Mission Impossible and stuff, it's nothing that you're like that blown away by. Okay, this is the guy that did Oh Copycat. The man who knew too little with Bill Murray. Then this movie. That's three really different films. Copycat, which is like a thriller. This uh, Man in New Toulouse is a comedy, and then this, and then did the core. I actually like the core. You know, as dumb as it is, I, I do like the core quite a bit. The core was fun. <clears throat> so yeah, four very different type of films in a row that he did. So <sighs> like you said. Sean Carter and Catherine Zeta Jones, I liked the two of them. They kept me at least interested and didn't make me hate the film. There was really nothing plot wise or story wise that made me mad or angry. You know, the ending is fine where he doesn't pull any stupid, dumb, out of the blue, like what the fuck plot points out of his ass. At least in my view. Maybe part of me is like, I was just nice to see Sean Connery, you know, as soon after he, days after he's passed away. It's nice to watch him in a movie. So maybe I'm giving him more credit than I would if I, if that didn't happen. But it's not a film I rewatch a lot. I like the two leads. Some of the high stuff is kind of interesting. There's really not much else I could talk about the film. And there's that, so I'm not sure what else to say. Sorry about that. I know it's not much of a review, but I'm not much of a reviewer, so there you go.
So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.